Because of you, Jerusalem, your sweetest notes employ the Paschal victory to him in strains of holy joy. How Judas lion burst his chains and crushed the serpent's head and brought with him from death's domains the long imprisoned dead. From hell's devouring jaws the prey, alone a little boy, his ransomed host pursue their way, where he has gone before. Triumphant in his glory now, his scepter ruleth all, earth, heaven, and hell before him bow, and that his footstool fall. While joyful thus his praise we sing, his mercy we implore, into his palace bright to bring and keep us evermore. All glory to the Father be, all glory to the Son, all glory, Holy Ghost, to thee, while endless ages run. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, be joyful in God, all ye lands. Hallelujah. Sing praises unto the honor of his name. Hallelujah. Make his praise to be exceeding glorious. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Say unto God, O oh, how wonderful art thou in thy works, O Lord, through the greatness of thy power. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, Alleluia. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, 
God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art the Most High in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, who shows to them that be in error the light of thy truth, to the intent that they may return into the way of righteousness, grant unto all them that are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion, that they may eschew those things that are contrary to their profession, and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us perfectly to know thy Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that following the steps of the great holy apostles, St. Philip and St. James, we may steadfastly walk in the way that leadeth to eternal life through the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The epistle is written in the second chapter of the first letter of St. Peter, beginning at the 11th verse. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that, Whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him, for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing he may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free, and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Honour all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honour the King. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. little while and ye shall not see me, saith the Lord Jesus. And again a little while and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. Alleluia. But I shall see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel is written in the 16th chapter of that according to St. John beginning at the 16th verse. Jesus said to his disciples, A little while, and ye shall not see me, and again a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. 
Then said some of his disciples among themselves, What is this that he saith unto us? A little while, and ye shall not see me, and again a little while, and ye shall see me, and because I go to the Father. They said therefore, What is this that he saith? A little while. We cannot tell what he saith. Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him, and said unto them, Do ye inquire among yourselves of that I said, A little while, and ye shall not see me, and again a little while, and ye shall see me? Verily, verily, I say unto you, That ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. And ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in travail, hath sorrow, because her hour is come. But as, she, as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish, for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye, know, ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Divine Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. I don't usually start a sermon like this, but I do really feel I need to ask, by means of a thumbs up from one or two of you in your windows, um, that you can actually hear me before I launch into the sermon proper. How splendid, thank you very much. I shall continue in good heart. I really am delighted to be preaching, I have to say in inverted commas, here at St Clement's. It's a church that I've got to know a little bit in the past couple of years and I've come to value it very much. It's a place to hide me in um, when other pressures are very great. It's always enjoyable being a visiting preacher, and that's true, even in a situation like the one we find ourselves in at present. I dare say, like many of you, um, I'm in self-isolation for 12 weeks, but I have been going out for exercise and walks around my local village near Halton, where I live. One of my walks takes me through the churchyard of St Helens in Little Everston, and there I stop, and because it has a porch, and I sit in the porch, it's unlocked. I lean against the wall and just for a moment I'm connected physically to the church, my church, the church I belong to. It's the concrete reality of the past in the present day and I find that all is well and strength comes to go on. Anyway scripture teaches us to be persistent in our faith and to find strength to go on. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13, God is faithful, who will not suffer us to be tempted above that we are able. Our prayer will prevail, our faith will go on. They have withstood the tests of plague and death before. Let's turn to the communion lections set in the Book of Common Prayer 1662 and let them speak to us afresh as they do year by year. What we've got here is a wholesome collect an epistle which is thick with questions of how to apply it in the year 2020, and a gospel which looks simple, but apparently wasn't simple at all to those who heard it first. With plenty of themes to choose from then, where did my thoughts fix themselves first as I prepared this sermon? I can't tell a lie, they fixed themselves first and repeatedly on the word eschew, that's where. What other ideas I tried to frame, or I kept being distracted, back to that lovely, archaic, strange-looking verb, eschew, or eschew as other people pronounce it. Some of you may know already how much I love words, and I've long made it a rule to look at once for answers whenever I have a question about words, which puzzles me. Only this morning I found myself checking up the word coupon, in the Oxford English Dictionary, which does indeed, as a, something I'd read teaches me, have a Scottish dialect meaning to be uh, referring to the face. Your coupon is your face. 
But anyway, Eshu is rarely used outside the context of religion and archaic religion at that. Even the 1611 uh, authorised version has only four examples of it, one of which coincidentally appears in the chapter of St Peter which follows today's epistle. And it's used three times of Job, who is described to us as one who eschewed evil. There are, of course, further examples in the prayer book. Partly because it's so a word that's very rarely heard, it's a lot of fun to say it aloud, as I'm doing repeatedly at the moment. But I wonder if you knew that it has an origin in common with a much less dignified word, skive. How different I think it would feel to pray, skive off evil and do good. It's a bit like the first time someone points out to you that the Italian composer Giuseppe Verdi, if his name were English, would be called Joe Green. Takes a bit of an edge off the romance, I think. It's not the same, is it? It's not the same at all. In the early Christian texts that I often work on, there's an idea that's common to various writers, that the difficulties and the obscurities we find in scripture are put there by God. They're put there to stimulate us to think more deeply. Where we find an enigmatic saying, or a teaching that seems to make no sense, we strive to understand, and that striving helps to deepen our faith. I would say the same of words like eshi in our prayers. They add depth to the flavour of our liturgical texts, just like salt does to our food. Yes, it's true that things might be clearer if nowadays we pride prayed skive off evil and do good. But how long would it be before someone decided that the words good and evil were not self-evident and that they needed unpacking and explaining? We can dump all the archaic words and translate the Bible into short sentences and still find it difficult to interpret and apply. What could be simpler, in, a, in looks anyway, than today's epistle? Honour all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honour the king. There are no obsolete terms there, all the words are familiar, but it would take several sermons, not just this one, to gather the full meaning and the many uses to which that verse has been put, and not all of them, I might add, are good ones. So whether we eschew, let go, abstain, refrain or skive off, the instruction we're being given in the collect today is as clear as it possibly could be. We should be active in doing what's right, but we should be equally active in eschewing what is wrong. As you well know, 1662 is not generous with what the common worship of the year 2000 calls seasonal provision. It consists mainly of those three elements, the collect, epistle and gospel, with the addition of the Easter anthems on Easter day and a proper preface on certain holy days. Last Sunday, I preached for Keys about the collect for that day, which showed Christ as being both an example for us to follow, where we are called to do something, and Christ as a sacrifice for sin, where we don't need to do anything because he has accomplished it for us. This Sunday's collect gives us a similar contrast of elements. But this time, we are to pray for help in living the Christian life, both positively and negatively. Every Christian finds some aspects of our calling easier to fulfil than others, and some sins easier to avoid than others. To eschew those things that are contrary to our profession is about what we don't do. To follow all such things as are agreeable to the same is about the things we do do. There's an affinity here with the Christian moral idea of sins of commission and omission. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But in this collect, we aren't referring to sins. Instead, we're referring to virtues, virtues of commission and virtues of omission. What this tells us, and you should note that it tells us this as an Easter message, part of the new creation in this Easter season. What it tells us is that we are meant to be active in our faith, and in both those ways, to do something right is a positive virtue, of course. But to avoid doing something that is bad is also, and equally, a positive virtue for Christians. We Christians often feel guilty that we aren't taking big steps or making grand gestures for Jesus. 
and we fail to see that there is an equal heroism in refraining from a spiteful word or a judgmental thought or an envious attitude or a discontented heart. Such small things can do as much damage to others and ourselves as the big, visible, obvious sins we are capable of. Eschewing such things because they are contrary to our profession, to our Christian faith, will bring us closer to God, who knows what that eschewal has cost us and why. If you make use of sacramental confession, you will know, and I'm sure you'll value, the last part of the service in which the penitent sinner is reminded that confession of sins is only a part of the whole package of Christian faith, a life lived as a Christian believer, washed and sanctified and justified. Let me remind you, may the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary and of all the saints, whatever good you have done, whatever evil you have patiently endured, be to you for the remission of your sins, the increase of grace and the reward of eternal life. We may fixate on our failures, but God remembers our efforts and our enduring. And one day, we trust, will come the reward of those beautiful words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. And to that we can all say, Amen, Amen, Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten of Son, Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost to the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory, to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Therefore, let us bow our knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, and come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace in time of need. We give thanks to you for our faith in Christ Jesus, our love for all the saints, and for the hope which is laid up for us in heaven. We give thanks and pray for those who are in authority, that all may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. We pray for the government and for the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, at this time of crisis. Thank you for the healthy birth of his son, Wilfred. We pray for the NHS and for all health and key workers guard, protect, and fill them with your fullness, that they may know your love which surpasses knowledge. Father, we pray for the church. Fill us with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that we may walk worthy of you, fully pleasing to you, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in knowledge and love of you. O oh God, especially at this troubled time, open a door for us for the word, that we might speak the mystery of Christ, that we may proclaim the Jesus' victory over death at this time of uncertainty. 
Stretch out your hand to heal, O Lord. And may there be signs and wonders performed through your name, through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. We especially pray and give thanks for Lynette Levitt, Vanda Elvey, Woody Kahn, Brian Watkins, and Mark Van der Weyer. We pray for the departed. Blessed are the dead who die in you, O Lord. Grant them rest from their labors, and may they find mercy from you on the day of the Lord. May we who abide in you have confidence and not be ashamed before you at your coming. May we have boldness in the day of judgment. May our faith not fail. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Praise the Lord, O my soul, while I live, I praise the Lord. Yea, as long as I have any being, I will sing praises unto my God. Alleluia. Christ the Lord is risen again. Christ hath broken every chain. Hark the angels shout for joy, singing evermore on high. Alleluia. Christ who gave for us his life, who for us endured the strife, is a possible lamb today, we to sing for joy and say, Alleluia. Christ, who bore all pain and loss, comfort us upon the cross, lives in glory now on high, pleads for us and hears a cry. Alleluia. He who slumbered in the grave is exalted now to save. Now through Christendom it rings that the Lamb is King of Kings. Alleluia. Now he bids us still abroad how the lost may be restored, how the penitent forgive, how we too may enter heaven. Alleluia. Thou apostle love indeed, Christ today your people feed. Take our sins and guilt away, that we all may sing for joy. Alleluia. Pray that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive this sacrifice at thy hands, to the praise and glory of his name, to our benefit and that of all his holy church. Ye do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, 
and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins, to all them that hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon the of you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty, that which is at all times and in all places, give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our only Son, our Lord, therefore with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee, and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, <clears throat> to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation self once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in the Holy Gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood who in the same night that he, he was betrayed, took bread. And when he given thanks to thee, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he given thanks to thee, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood, the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy humble servants, having in remembrance the precious death and passion of thy dear Son, his mighty resurrection and his glorious ascension, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And although we be unworthy to our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences, and to grant that all we who are partakers of this Holy Communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour Christ commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only and my soul shall be healed. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for us, preserve our bodies and souls unto everlasting life. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ shed for us, preserve our bodies and souls unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Amen. A little while and ye shall not see me. Alleluia. And again a little while, and you shall see me, because I go to the Father. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that vouchsafe to feed us who do receive these holy mysteries with the spiritual food and the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. <coughs> and as assures thereby, <coughs> thereby as thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are members incorporated in the mystical body of thy Son, 
which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and also heirs who hope for thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost, be honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds <clears throat> in the knowledge and love of God <clears throat> and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. O Queen of Heaven, rejoice, alleluia. The one whom you have merited to bear, alleluia, has arisen as he foretold, alleluia. Pray for us now before God.